Hey everybody, this is Praxis. This video is a counterpoint to one that I did last week for Christmas. That episode was full of a lot of hope. We were talking about why in 2022 things might not be quite as bad as a lot of us are fearing. But in this video, we're going to get real and talk about why in 2022 most of us are probably fine. <laughs> Okay, so why is 2022 going to be such a nut crusher, especially when just last week I was saying there was some reason for hope, a little bit of ray of sunshine there. Well, uh, first off, if you haven't seen that video, here's a link to it. You can check it out. I highly recommend. You know, it's always good to have a little bit of positivity when the apocalypse is upon you. Uh, I believe everything that I said in that video, but that video was specific to certain types of political messages, uh, certain types of political rhetoric that I felt were going to probably be sunsetting over the next six to eight months, mostly because their political usefulness, I think, is going to be waning. Uh, those are messages specifically related to COVID response. Now, when COVID first came out on the world stage, politicians lined up very eagerly uh, to promise either overtly or kind of, uh, you know, imply that as long as we did everything that they said, uh, they would make it so that COVID would go away, bring things back to normal, I think is the, the, the phrase that they were frequently saying. Uh, that's never going to happen. Uh, COVID is never going to go away. Even if you vaccinated every single human being on the entire planet, COVID would never go away. It can harbor in the animal species. So many different animal species can hold at both people's pets. Uh, not, not every t different type of pet species can harbor it, but certain types can. Uh, certain types of wild animals can harbor it. You, people are not going to go around and vaccinate every single wild animal, uh, you know, running through the woods around me. Even if you killed every single animal species on the planet that can harbor COVID and vaccinated 100% of the human beings, and the only uh, creatures left on planet, uh, on planet Earth are vaccinated human beings, COVID would never go away because it transmits perfectly well in 100% vaccinated environments. We've seen that under a multiple of uh, you know, examples, specifically a lot of cruise ships, 100% everybody's vaccinated on there, still spreads all over the ship. So COVID is never going to go away. Now, that is not what the politicians promised us. And when politicians uh, uh, aren't going to be able to make good on their promises, I don't know whether they really care whether they're not making good on their promises, but they don't want to be caught not making good on their promises. So when that's not going to happen, they need someone to blame. And that's where the rhetoric comes in. And the rhetoric has been about like, well, who can we blame? So, you know, people won't turn on us. And the people that they've chosen to blame are unvaccinated people, as though if they could vaccinate everyone, like they could make, they could have made good on their promises, except that, you know, there were those children that didn't get vaccinated, even though children have almost no trouble with COVID whatsoever. If we could, if we just could have, uh, you know, vaccinated the children, or if we just could have vaccinated all the people that had already had COVID and were practically immune anyway, you know, we could have gotten rid of it. So, you know, it's that Goldstein game of blame. Uh, now, there's some sense to it. You know, if you get vaccinated, it does seem like you are less likely to catch COVID, and it seems like you might possibly be less likely to transmit it. The science is still kind of fuzzy on that. Um, so I'm, I'm not at all anti-vaccine. I am pro-choice uh, in terms of body choice. I think my body, my choice. Uh, I've been a progressive for a long time, and I believe that phrase back when progressives agreed with it, and now the progressives have abandoned it, apparently. I still believe my body, my choice. I think that's a basic kind of fundamental human freedom that we should all have. Um, but, you know, uh, people who have chosen to exercise that freedom have been being kind of vilified uh, recently. And uh, those are the types of things I think might be sunsetting uh, going into 2022 because I think the people in power need a victory. They need to say, we did it, we conquered it, we delivered the promise that we were going to get life back to normal for you guys. And I think a lot of that stuff is going to, the, the usefulness of it's going to dry up as we head term, towards the midterm elections because they need to declare victory. And if you've already accomplished something, you don't need to be hammering constantly about, you know, continuing the fight. So that was that one hope that I had. But that said, that's just one thing. And there is so much else uh, coming at us in 2022, including the fallout from all that. We've had two years of politicians divide and conquering, pitting people against each other. And it's just gotten worse and worse. My parents are going to be flying in a couple of days. They're going to visit my sister. They're going to be flying on an airplane. Very few people, you know, fly manually uh, these days. It's very tiring on the arms. So they're going to be on an airplane. Airplanes are just insane environments now, uh, you know, for, from both sides. You know, there are people that are just rabidly anti-mask. I, I wear masks. I've, I've come to really love masks. I have not been sick with even sniffles in the past couple of years. Um, I think I'm just going to do masking, you know, during cold and flu season, not during the summer, but during cold and flu season, I'm going to just continue the mask forever. I think it's just great. Uh, 
they, they, if you wear real N95 masks, they work really well. I love not being sick. It's been great for me. So I'm not anti-mask at all, but I think most masks that people wear are really ineffective. I call them fashion masks. You know, most of the air just goes in and out the side, it's unfiltered. Um, and you got a lot of people that are like rabidly anti-mask. You know, some people have like been, you know, fighting on airplanes, getting violent. I don't want to wear a mask. You know, it's like, okay, I, I agree that, and not that they bring up this point, but I agree that a lot of masks, like I said, are useless, but you know, you wear it to make people feel comfortable in the same way you wear a shirt and pants. You know, there's no scientific rationale for why you m must wear a shirt and pants on an airplane. It just, that's our culture. It makes people feel more comfortable. You know, learn to live with people. You know, don't make such a big deal out of it when it's just, it's just a piece of fabric, whatever. You know, don't, don't get all like your panties all up in a bunch about it. Um, you got people on the other side. I, just a couple of days ago, there was a woman that punched an elderly man in the face because I guess he removed his mask, which wasn't doing anything anyway. Uh, he removed the, his useless mask for some reason, and she punches the guy in the face and starts screaming at him. People have been weaponized against each other by the politicians. You know, politicians are always talking about, it's like, it's time for us to come together. You know, the, the last thing a politician wants is a united populace. <laughs> politicians gain and keep their power by keeping people divided, you know, uh, figuring out what their hot button issues are, figuring out what kind of rhetoric to use with different groups, keeping people afraid of each other instead of thinking about what's happening from above. So, you know, the damage that's been exacerbated over the last two years is still here. We have a population that has less and less and less of an ability to interact with each other civilly, to uh, discuss things civilly, to have respect for each other, to, uh, to function as a society and it's gotten so much worse over the past couple of years and that is a powder keg waiting to explode because people have just been weaponized against each other. Those are all issues up in the mind. There are other issues coming in 2022 as well and these have nothing to do with COVID. These are things that have been baked into the cake for decades and I'm going to put them under two categories. One's economics and one is environmental as it relates to, you know, food production and all that. First off, economics obviously has been exacerbated by some of the uh, responses to COVID, but, uh, you know, it's been just sitting and simmering for decades. Uh, countries being over leveraged, getting into enormous debt, uh, you know, uh, it's the time to pay the piper is coming and it seems like 2022 is a pretty damn good candidate for when the, how does Canadian Prepper put it? I like the way Canadian, the shizzy hits the fizzy. <laughs> I like that much more than the, uh, the, the alternate version of SHDF. Um, 2022 seems like a pretty good, uh, good candidate for that shizzy hitting the fizzy. And, uh, and there are a lot of other things that are kind of exacerbating that in terms of, uh, you know, the transformation of the workforce, uh, you know, people's buying power, uh, you know, the inflation that, that's, you know, occurring with the uh, de uh, devaluation of the dollar. As it, There are so many things um, uh, stacked against the world economy at the moment. It, we can't go too many more. You know, I've, I've actually been astonished that they've been able to keep the, ki the can kicking down the road as long as they have, but you can see the cracks really starting at this point. There were, there are so many little bits and pieces that are starting to actually fall off the economy that, you know, 2022, I think, could be the real, uh, you know, moment when, you know, all those things start to culminate. And on top of that, like I said, we have environmental issues. You know, whether or not you believe that humans are cli uh, causing climate change or not, uh, the climate is obviously changing. I, right now I'm recording this. It's just a little bit from New Year's Eve and... It's warm out today. It's been warm out for a while. And I'm not one of these people who thinks like, well, for it to be a global warming, it has to literally be warm at your house. It's just weather has been really weird all over the world, here included. Things are just crazy. The, the trees here, they keep budding and then it freezes again and it kills the buds off. Things are really uh, changing all over our planet. And uh, that is uh, starting to really have a lot of impacts on things like food production and uh, food security for people. So you just have all of these things that are just piled up on top of each other. People's ability to eat, people's ability to get their paycheck, people's ability to have their paycheck be worth anything that they can actually buy with. Um, and, and then on top of that, people's uh, reduced ability to handle stress, to interact with each other. People are stressed the F out at the moment. I think 2022 is gonna be a really, really challenging year. 
So what do you do about that? I mean, that, that, that's great to be like uh, pessimistic about it. It's a prepping channel. That's, what, that's our job here is to, to sow pessimism. But our other job here is to uh, inspire you to actually do something about it. And there are so many things that you can do. And, uh, you know, if you want to get a bunch of individual things, look through my library, my whole catalog of video. There's tons of stuff there. Uh, there are all sorts of other prepping channels that have all sorts of great tips. But I just as a general blanket um, a statement on what you really need to do to get ready for the things that are coming in 2022 in terms of you know civil unrest, violence, you know food se uh, security, uh, scarcity of, of things that you know you, we've kind of come to rely on, medication, all that kind of stuff, is uh, start getting yourself to a point where you can disconnect from the world for longer and longer amounts of time. Think about it like there's a storm coming in. You know, there's a storm coming in, and you know. Uh, we may lose power. It might be difficult to travel around and get to grocery stores for a couple of days. Get yourself ready for a couple of days. Make it so that you'd be okay for a couple of days. You know, and then extend it beyond there. I know a lot of you guys watching this channel, you're well beyond a couple of days. But just keep adding to that padding right now because I really feel, I really believe that anything, any work that you put in right now uh, to achieve things in terms of, you know, you know uh, you know, getting that paycheck and then turning that paycheck into something tangible, turning that pay, uh, paycheck into tools, into supplies, into food. Uh, you're going to get a lot more mileage out of, it, out of it if you do it today instead of tomorrow and more mileage tomorrow than the day after that. I think 2022 is going to be a really, really challenging year. And um, if, you, if you don't have the fire under your, under your ass at this point, Get the fire on your ass. Uh, you know, get yourself into a situation where uh, you know you'll be able to pat yourself on the back. Uh, think about you know when things happen with COVID and uh, you know things that you you know were kicking yourself about. I know I was kicking myself. Uh, you know, specifically, I didn't have a lot of kids' uh, respirators. You know, uh, that was that was a blind spot that I had. I'd, I'd foolishly been using them because they were the handiest box on top, and I was using the kid respirators. Uh, you know, I was doing things like sanding or whatever. You know, check through your stuff, see what you got, see, think about what you're gonna need, medications, food, tools, all that kind of stuff, and get your stuff in order now, because uh, it's an awful feeling to be thinking that, you know, if only I'd done this yesterday. Give you a quick example, this isn't a life-threatening one, but um, when I, I uh, saw the writing on the wall in terms of uh, price inflation with electronics, uh, I knew I was gonna need uh, a new computer. Um, so I purchased a new computer and, uh, you know, got it in. I did it over the summer and I wanted to get that ahead of uh, some of the shortages so I could get the best price that I could. Uh, just recently, uh, my boy, River, he uses a computer for some of his schoolwork and things and also for rec uh, recreation, entertainment and stuff. His computer has started to die. Uh, I uh, was going to replace his machine. I, I, the, the machine that I bought over the summer seemed good. Like, this is a good one. doesn't use very much electricity, whatever. It's a Hewlett Packard tower kind of thing. Uh, I just reordered it. I reordered another one uh, yesterday. Uh, it was $150 more to buy it now than if I had bought it a couple of months ago. So many things are going to be like that, where if you can get the things you know you're going to need six months from now, eight months from now, a year from now, if you can get those things now, I think that you are going to save yourself a whole lot of trouble, a whole lot of money, if you can do that kind of stuff now. So get going. Happy New Year, <laughs> and uh, good luck in 2022. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.